Despite the two-hour ride, Glass fans came in mass to support their Hilltoppers. It was more like a home game, as Lynchburg fans clearly outnumbered host Huguenot. And the Toppers fired out of the blocks. First play, Jason McCombs nails Jerry German for the six-yard loss. The offense got great field position, moved it well in position to score, but turned it over twice inside the Falcons' 20, scoreless after one. Early in the second, Glass drives once more. Neil Calloway finds Paul Fitzgerald. This time, the toppers have something to show for it. Keith Trent from two yards, 7-0 Glass. Before you could say touchdown, Huguenot strikes back. First play, Jody Tyler airs it out to German. On the money, 71-yard TD. The Falcons had a seven-all tie and momentum. It looked as if the half would end that way, but in the final 30 seconds, instead of running out the clock, Tyler tries to pass, but is swarmed under and fumbles. Glass recovered at the 24. Next play, 16 seconds left. Callaway up top to Tracy Donegan for the score. Glass with a 14-7 lead and huge lift into the break. It turned everything around. The locker room was a lot. We could get more done, and we, we weren't, you know, we, we didn't have to alternate our game plan. The momentum carried over to period three. Timmy Dean and B.B. Shavers breaking back-to-back -back big gainers. Both rushed for more than 100 yards. Same drive, seven-yard line, fourth and two. The toppers go for it, and Shavers gets it. The AAA Player of the Year scores the next play and adds the two-point conversion, 22-7. Then, like it's done all season, the defense shuts them down. Allen McDaniel picking off two passes. Glass wins the state title game 22 to 7. We've always believed it, and that's what it takes for state champ. It takes winners, you know, it takes people who don't fold. And uh, that's what we have, a good family. Everybody out there, it's been great. I'm ecstatic. I don't know. It's wonderful. Hey, this is it. This is all we need to say. This is it. We're going to party hardy, baby. <laughs> The season-long dream is now reality. For the first time since 1938, E.C. Glass is the state football champion. Everybody up north, like Huguenot, they thought uh, E.C. Glass was a joke. They get into the playoffs and they're choked. And we just showed them that it's no joke that we could handle it. We, we dedicated our season last year after the Cortland game to this game right here, and we got it. This is bad this time for August 10th. Number one. Baby. Number one. When we first got there, y'all was there waiting for us, greeted us, and like we said when we got there, that we was gonna bring home the big trophy, the big gold, you know, some of those flojos, and now we back and now celebrate and we number one. The greatest moment of, of the lives of the football players and the coaching staff was to go on to that, to walk out on the artificial turf at Richmond City Stadium and see 4,000 people from Lynchburg supporting us. And so a football state championship came back to E.C. Glass again after 50 years. And the fans, including the boys of 38, were proud. But let's not forget the coaches in all this. From endless strategy meetings to late night sessions with the washing machines, these seven men put in untold hours of overtime. And to each of them, this 1988 season will always have a special meaning. And I think it's something that you never forget. And uh, I think I have to think about how those men felt who were in the gymnasium. I'll never forget the last uh, pep session we had prior to going to Richmond and thinking about how they appeared to, to sort of remember what they had gone through back in 1938. And I mean, that's unique. And I think, you know, if it affected them that way and they carried it on and, and feeling the way I do about football, knowing what it had done for me, I think I can't help but feel somewhat similar to what they felt. Yeah. It was a, a very big personal reward in that, um, again, you, you put a lot of time and hard work in, into what we're doing. and. The, uh, uh, the goals that we had set for us, we, we reached them. And so from that aspect, it was a, it was a dream season, really, to be honest. Uh, it's something that uh, I hope we get to do again, and I'm confident that we will be able to. But if we don't, I'll, I'll live with these memories. It's awesome. It's just a feeling every day I wake up, and you can't go without thinking about what happened back in December. 
I guess the biggest memory for me was uh, returning to Richmond, where I played in high school, played on that field on occasions. And uh, at the end of the game, having coaches from my high school come up and shake my hand, give you a hug, and, and just so surprised at how the, the crowd, the enthusiasm, uh, the people that lined up before the game, the, the score, everything about the day was just something that um, we live with as long as, you know, as long as there's life, it does be the most awesome moment in my life. Uh, anytime there's a championship, it means a lot to everybody involved, and being a part of uh, something like this uh, means a lot to me. It was something I always remember. It's a feeling that that's hard to explain unless you've had a chance to go through it. And the two events in my life, winning the state championship in wrestling and uh, taking part in the football championship this year, the chills will always be there when you think about some of the moments, the Friday nights, the parents, the uh, all the support we had from one end of the season to the other. So I think it's a feeling that'll probably stay with me the rest of my life. One day, uh, right before we were coming up from our fifth, uh, pra last practice for our fifth ball game, uh, w which was Halifax, I think, uh, I, I told them that, uh, look, you fellas, if, if you win against Halifax and then come back against GW, you win both of those games, you're going to be state champions. And I, I, I didn't realize it at the time how much that uh, they, they were taking what I said, but after the season over, four or five of them came up and told me that, hey, coach, you told us. And they, they remembered it. And uh, you never know, a little thing such as that will go a long way in helping to win a state championship. Th this was a unique bunch of kids that we had, and uh, I'm just proud as I can be to be a part of it. You know, we made something happen for the city of Lynchburg, and, and they remind you of it every day, that we're proud of you, Coach. We're proud of what the, what the guys did. Thank you, you know, for putting this city on the map. So other than, you know, fulfilling a dream for 70 kids and, and a lot of old men, coaches, uh, the, the city, I feel like we, we, we did something for the city. Many of this year's games will not soon be forgotten. It is often said that so many things must go right for a team to win a AAA state championship like this one did. If this was not a team of superstars, it was a team of grit and spirit, of toughness and heart and enthusiasm. And in the end, they proved it was no fluke. They were ranked number one. We are the champions.